Hey, it's Johara. Welcome back to my channel, to the Witchy Reader. So I'm going to be talking about my uh, best uh, reads of 2022. I know this video is a little bit late, but yeah, I just didn't, I barely had any motivation to film last month. I think the only videos I really did was my DVR and wrap at the beginning of the month. I just had no motivation to film. It didn't help that I get, did get sick for like a week as well. So yeah. <laughs> um, so... I'm going to start with my rereads, um, because I do do a good amount of rereads every year, because, um, even though I love reading new books, I also love rereading and enjoying these, especially my all-time favorite series, like my top three favorite series I've read so many times that I probably know them backwards, forwards, inside out, upside down, because I just, I, I've read them so many times and I know them so well, uh, I, I, and I bet most of you can guess at least what two of them are, like, I, because I talk about them so much on my channel. Um, so yeah, and with the rereads, I'm really, I'm not going to talk, get that much into what they're about, so this video isn't too long. Um, I'm just going to, uh, say what they are, and I probably talk about them on my channel. If not, I might give a brief description, or if they're really underrated, I might give a brief description to get more people to read them because I love them obviously if I'm rereading them and I would love more people to read them <laughs> so yeah and then I'll get into the um books that I read for the first time and I might get a little bit more detailed into them but I'll try not to do too much because I get a bit ranty and I don't want this video to be too long because editing will be a hassle <laughs> okay so my rereads I reread um Hooks Books in the All New Sequel which I love um I'm not a fan of the sequel movie they did make um recently ish I think it's been a few months now um I think it was on Halloween I don't remember but um I wasn't a fan of it like I first of all the main characters were dull as heck and there was I don't know I feel like the characters besides the witches because they were so funny um the human characters they were just in the original they were so much more funny more lively just like the characters in this book but the characters in the, t in the movie was just so dull, and I'm still bitter that they did not adapt this book because I absolutely love the book. For those of you that do not know, it's 25 years later. It follows Pop, uh, follows um, Max and Allison's daughter Poppy, um, her best friend Travis, and her crush Isabella. So there's also LGBTQIA plus friends. So there's that, and um, uh. And I, what I love about this is that the stakes are just so much higher because I don't want to spoil anything, but let's just say the, first of all, they bring her, the witches back in a different way. And, um, I love, I don't want to spoil anything, but basically the stakes are so much higher because basic in the movie, like if they, all they had to do was stall the witches long enough because once you know, a certain time came, they would go to dust or explode or whatever. But um, on here, if they waited too long, the spell would become permanent, which means there was no going back. And that wasn't the only reason why there was high stakes. But like I said, the other part is too much of a spoiler, so I don't want to spoil you. But yeah. Um, so, I just prefer it so much better. The characters, the relationships between the characters, and the high stakes. Just, I loved it even better than the original movie. The sequel movie was trash. I only watched it once, and I do not plan to watch it again. Um, I ranted a little bit more than I wanted to on, on that one. But, I just, I haven't had a chance to talk about that yet. And, I just wanted to talk about it. So, I, when, so according to Goodreads, this is my first read of the year. Bewitched and Oz is a duology, and I don't think I talk about it that much on this channel, but I do really enjoy it. It's basically about, um, Ziri, and basically magic is outlawed in Oz, and Ziri and her friends, uh, Tabitha and Vashti, have magic along with Ziri's crush's younger brother, Brink. Um, so they start, uh, practicing magic in secret, but then, um, they get caught, and Tabitha gets captured pretty early on, so that's not much of a spoiler, and the other, and the three of them have to go on this journey to, um, uh, save Tabitha and find a way to, um, make magic, n uh, legal again, because it's a part of who they are, and they didn't want to give it up, and, uh, Ziri, I feel like, I love Ziri's character, but, 
at first she got on my nerves because I feel like she was a little too boy crazy. But then later on she showed how passionate she is to be herself and to save magic. And I just fell in love with her character. And I love her relationship with Brink because they end up falling in love. Uh, so yeah. Um, the Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Fennell. This is six books. I absolutely love it. If you like Harry Potter. It, there's not a direct connection to Harry Potter. But I kind of like to think of it as the unofficial prequel. Kind of like um, Fantastic Beast, which is an official prequel, but um, I just love it because, um, first of all, it's so pa fast paced. It's about these twins and this prophecy, and they have to get their magic awakened and unlock all the elements so that they can use them and uh, defeat the villain. And it's just so fast paced, like, you're always doing something, you're always going, and there's like not a moment to just like stop and relax. I feel like there was one book, I can't remember which one it is now. Might have been, was it the fourth or fifth? I don't remember. One of them felt a little bit more slow paced than the others, but then the next book after that I picked it up again. I think it was the fifth book. I might be wrong though. But yeah, um, I absolutely love uh, this series and I feel like it's so underrated and definitely should be talked about more. I absolutely adore it. It's just so good. I want to talk about this series more on my channel. Then, uh, so we read Six of Crows. This was at the end of the year. Uh, I think in December, actually. Um, but I did not release Crooked Kingdom. I still haven't. I plan to read that next or this month because it's February now. I keep forgetting it's actually February. Okay. Um, so, uh, I loved rereading it. I think I only read it once, but I immediately, immediately became my, one of my favorite books. It's in my top five. I fell in love with it and I loved rereading it and I'm so excited to reread Crooked Kingdom as well. Um, Monster High Ghoul Friends, which is, um. So, uh, this series is obviously based around Monster High, and, um, there's four books, and I absolutely love this series, it's in my top three, it's one of the books I said I know, how, I know, like, backwards, forwards, inside out, upside down, I just love it, I've read it so many times, it's a middle grade, it's a quick and easy read, um, and it's just so good, I love the characters and the friendships, and, um, the friendship is the main thing, like, there's hardly any romance at all, like, Ro Rochelle mentioned her boyfriend in Paris. She also gets a crush on Deuce, but nothing happens between that because anyone who knows Monster High knows Deuce stays with Cleo. And then, um, I, I do ship Rebecca and Sai, and Sai does have a crush on Rebecca. And even though it's never stated that Rebecca has a crush on Sai, like, it's you can kind of tell time at times that Rebecca does. I just don't think she realizes it. At least that's my theory. Like, I love them together. But yeah, it's mostly about the friendship between Rochelle, Venus, and Rebecca, and a little bit Sai, especially near the end. And um, they have to stop uh, this uh, monster from trying to take over their school and put it under a spell and try to bring back the old world, which the old world is basically a place full of racism against certain types of monsters. Like, it's a place where vampires, mummies, and aristocratic ghosts are the superior monsters and every other monster is basically just garbage so they were trying to bring that back and they were trying to stop it so yeah which is a, not all that different if you ask me the storyline at least like the theory of the storyline at least like they it's definitely different a lot different but i feel like it has similarities to one of the monster eye movies the uh bright camera action because um that's what uh, Stoker, I almost forgot his name, Stoker was trying to do. He was trying to manipulate Drexel Orange into thinking she was the Vampire Queen so that she can make it so vampires rule all, against all other monsters. And, yeah, so. Um, and then there's Harry Potter and Seekers, which uh, everyone should know are my two favorite series. Harry Potter, I don't think I really need to explain because it's Harry Potter. And then, um... Secrets, I think I talk about a great deal on my channel because I love it and it's very underrated. One thing I noticed last year is that my three favorite series of all time all have to do with friendship more than romance. And I love it. Like, I'm here for it. Like, anyone who knows me knows I prefer friendship over romance because it's just not seen enough. No wonder these are my three favorite uh, books. But yeah, um... Seekers is really good. I definitely highly recommend if you like ro friendship. There is some romance, but like I said, friendship, even once romance is introduced, it doesn't, oh, um, 
It doesn't overshadow the friendship. Um, I did realize how much secrets in Harry Potter are actually alive because both of the characters start out really young at the beginning and you watch them grow up. And then also, uh, uh, it's like centered around these friendships. Harry Potter is obviously Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Then secrets is Kalik, uh, Hugh Drac, Lusa, and Toklo. And um, yeah. And you watch them grow up and their friendships, and then as they get older, they start to have romantic feelings for people. But what, e even once they do, the romance is just sprinkled in so elegantly, like it doesn't overtake the story. And um, it definitely doesn't overshadow the friendship, because that is still the most important thing in both series. So yeah, uh, I realized how similar the two are, in theory, in some ways. And I was like, no wonder they're my favorite series. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so that's all of, uh, the rereads. So here's the books that I read for the first time that I really enjoyed. So, near the beginning of the year, I read King of Scars, um, for the first time, because I had, uh, I read, uh, Shadow and Bone and Six Crows towards the end of 2021, um, for the first time. And then at the beginning of 2022, I read King of Scars and the sequel, uh, Rule of Wolves, and I enjoyed then both, I liked Rule of Wolves more. I think I rated King of Scars four stars and Rule of Wolves, Rule of Wolves five stars. But yeah, I still um, enjoyed them both, and they were uh, really good. Um, not as good as Six Crows. Haven't decided if I like them more. I think I, I think I might like them a little bit more than uh, Shadow and Bone actually. Um, but I might be a little bit biased because the crows do make an appearance in Rule of Wolves. Plus, there's David, and he's actually was my favorite character in Shadow and Bone. But we get we get into him a little bit more in King of Scars, and yeah. So plus, I love seeing his relationship with Virginia. That was so cute. Um. So yeah. And then um, The Rise of Kyoshi, I really enjoyed. That's a duology I read both uh, last year, and um, that was actually really good. I enjoyed it. Um, I liked Kiyoshi. She was one of the few of avatars besides Aang and Korra we actually got to hear about, at least enough to get a sense of who the character is. Um, but here we get to see her much more, and it was definitely interesting because I guess I had this image of Kiyoshi. Like everybody, every avatar fan has this image of Kiyoshi, of this like tough fighter who takes no crap, who's just. Yeah, that's kind of the image everyone has. Like, she's also not afraid to kill and do what's necessary, which is definitely the opposite of Aang. And, um, so, yeah, we all just have this image of Kiyoshi because of that. And, uh, he, but at the beginning of it, she was completely the opposite. I was like, wait a minute, is this the same character? But it was basically leading you to how she became that person. Because she wasn't really cold-hearted. She was just... Um, I guess she became more, she did become more hard because she went through a lot as being the avatar. So you kind of slowly watch her become the person we know from, we know from Avatar. So it was interesting, especially what reading the beginning and be like, Kyoshi beat all soft spoken and shy and quiet and scared. I was like, wait a minute, this isn't the Kyoshi I know and love. But she soon became the Kyoshi we all know and love. And it was a really interesting transition. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I also read Ahsoka. Um, uh, I really enjoyed Ahsoka. It was really good. Um, ah so I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I, I, try I think that once I tried watching the Star Wars movies back in middle school. Um, but I couldn't get into them. Um, but... Even before that, I did watch uh, Star Wars Clone Wars in elementary school, um, which I really loved. I watched that with my childhood best friend. I, she was obsessed with Star Wars, everything Star Wars. I still remember going her her bedroom. She had pictures of the characters she had drawn all over, like you couldn't even see her wall. I still remember that. And, yeah, so, um, uh, and... I absolutely loved Ahsoka's character. She was always my favorite character. And um, when I found out that there was a book of Ahsoka, I think it might have come out last year or the year before. I don't think it's been out that long. Maybe a few years at the most. But yeah, 
Um, and I loved it. Like, you get to see what she was up to in between Clone Wars and Rebels, I think. I still haven't watched Rebels. That's on my uh, to-do list in the next few months. Um, soon. Whenever I get to it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just really loved seeing what she was up to, the kind of things she got into, and I was really enjoying it. Um, A Whole New World, which is the Aladdin Twisted Tale, that was really good too. It, it, it was one of my favorite Twisted Tales. Um, and I just, I love the take on it, like, what if Jafar got the lamp, and it was so dark, like, some some dark things happen, and it was just so good to see it in a see this version of it and I feel like it was just done so well it was definitely one of my favorites of the Twisted Tales I've read so far I only have a couple more that I want to read like there's some that I don't want to read because I just don't like fairy tales or whatever but yeah this is definitely one of my favorites so far and I think it's going to remain that way um and then Reflection which is the Mulan Twisted Tale I also love this one I think these two I rated five stars um and I absolutely loved it this was what if Mulan had to go to the end world. So basically, at the end of the uh, the movie, when um the battle with the um Huns um and uh it said Mulan getting injured, Li Shang got injured, but it was severe enough that he was like almost dead. So she had to travel to the underworld to try to save him and bring his soul back up. Um. So, uh, I, so, last couple of months, I've been reading the Avatar Last Evander, um, uh, comics and the Legend of Korra comics, and the Avatar ones, I wasn't the biggest fan of, surprisingly enough. I mean, I feel like Avatar and Korra, I, I love them both for different reasons. I don't think I love one more than the other. I mean, I have more of a nostalgic thing for Avatar, because I watched that when I was younger, but, I love them both pretty equally, just for different reasons. Like, I know some people bash on Korra as a show and a character, but I feel like it's more mature. Like, not the characters are older, so they're more mature. The relationships are older. Uh, since they're older, the relationships are more mature. And at the end, Korra, I think people just didn't like her because she wasn't Aang. But that's the point. She's not supposed to be Aang. Like, I, I didn't want to see someone who was basically a copycat version of Aang. I wanted to see a new avatar being her own person. That's who she was. Plus, she had an amazing character development. Um, and plus, in the end, she ditched the guy for the girl. And I loved it. <laughs> I know a lot of people thought Korra and Asami's relationship was, uh, like, came out of nowhere. But if you pay attention, season three and season four, you can tell, especially in season four. Like, there's, like, several times where they legit blush if, around each other. And you're telling me you didn't see this coming? I saw it coming. Uh, maybe that's because I'm a lesbian. I don't know. But I saw it coming. Um, and they just couldn't be obvious about it because the network wouldn't let them. This did come out in the earlier 2000s, and it still wasn't exactly normal. I, I feel like it still isn't all the time, but especially for a kid's show. And so they weren't even allowed to kiss at the end. All the show was them hold hands going to the sport, the spirit realm. But yeah, um, the Avatar comics, I feel like I had issues with them because of Korra, uh, not Korra, Aang and Katara's relationship. I never liked their romance. I felt like it was cringy. First of all, it, that, that relationship is what was for. It's not Korra and Asami. It's like it was slow and built up. That one, I feel like, even though Aang had a crush on Korra from the, uh, why did I keep saying Korra? Katara from the very beginning, Katara saw her him as a younger brother, okay? Until the last five minutes, she saw him as a younger brother, okay? And their kissing always has me cringe, and, um, I just, I didn't like them. Plus, I know they're only two years apart, and in more cases, it wouldn't be difficult. Like, I actually ship Katara with, uh, um, Zuko and they are two years apart, but what I don't like about this is that Aang is 12. Okay, I'm sorry, but what 14 year old is gonna have a crush on a 12 year old? Okay, and with Aang's crush on Katara, it felt more like this childhood affliction. She was the first person he saw when he opened his eyes. It felt like this whole schoolgirl crush, not a real love thing. And yeah, so I just, I don't like them together, and I feel like that's part of the reason why I had issues with comics, because we got more into their relationship, since it was after they got together. 
and I just didn't like it. Um, but the point of all this conversation was that even, so most of the Avatar comics I rated three stars, a couple two stars, because I really didn't like them. Or, it's not like I disliked them, I just wasn't a huge fan. Like, if I really just disliked them, I probably would rate them one star. But, the Legend of Korra Turf Wars, I did love, I rated that those four stars. Because you got more into Korra and Sami's relationship after the show ended. There, you saw their vacation, their first kiss, and them tell everybody on their terms about their relationship because it still wasn't exactly normalized for two girls to be together um and uh you see them tell their parent or poorest parents you see them tell their friends when they were ready and um tell the world and uh whatever and when they were ready and you saw some of their relationship because they had little arguments here and there but they always came together in the end it was just so cute and i loved their relationship like that's the only reason why this comic made it this high because i loved their relationship and get seeing it more especially since we didn't see it that much um especially since we didn't see this side of their relationship in the original just because it wasn't allowed to show how it wasn't allowed to show them together as a couple that's why they didn't become a couple until the very end and that's why they still didn't kiss at the very end but yeah um moving on i ranked a little bit more than i meant to um percy jackson and the olympians um i read this for the first time when was it it wasn't that long ago only a few months ago when i started it but i have percy jackson and the olympians and the heroes of olympus on here because i love both series so much they're pretty neck and neck on my like i don't think i love one more than the other i just love them both so much uh, there's still more percy jackson books i want to read uh, I just haven't gotten to them yet, um, but I absolutely love them. I love Percy's character, his friendship with Grover, his relationship with Annabeth, um, and I love the prophecy. I loved, I, I love, so spoilers for Percy Jackson because I just want to say this, but I love how um, Percy's, uh, not Percy's, Annabeth's knife turned out to be the cursed blade of the prophecy just because most cases in most books like this the so-called cursed blade as they called it would have been the sword or blade or whatever that the hero was has been using the entire time and that would be that would have been just so obvious and so like of course we've seen this before it's always it's always that way but no annabeth's knife was the cursed blade and i love that twist just had to say that but um yeah i loved um, both series, I love, and then in the Heroes Olympus, I loved the new characters and the relationships, I loved getting more, I loved getting into other people's perspectives other than just Percy, for the most part, there was a couple of characters I was more mad about, but yeah, um, and then, uh, I loved, Annabeth was probably my favorite perspective, well, one of them, because she was always one of my favorite characters, and I loved getting into her mind, and I loved her storyline, and Marco Fina, and her, and Percy's storyline, in the House of Hades, going to Tartarus, that was awesome fun and then um in the book five when you get into um nico's perspective and i loved that a lot because he's also one of my favorite characters and i love getting to his perspective and his mind and i also loved finding out that he was gay and that he had a christian percy and then i loved the relationship that him and will form at the end and i want to see that i want to see more of that and i think we get a little bit more of that in the trials of apollo and then there's also that new standalone novel that's coming out uh, sometime this year, The Sun and the Star, which is about Nico and Will, so I'm very excited. Um, and yeah, and uh, I put Percy Jackson in Sword of Hades, which is a short story, and the only reason why I put it in here is because, again, I love Nico, and I love that he was part of this. Him, Percy, and um, Thalia, the children of the big three, had to help Hades find um, his special sword that was supposed to be secret from the gods. And yeah, so... And it's always fun to see the three of their um, banter because they're all like sassy, sarcastic people by nature. Uh, but yeah, um, those were my favorite reads of 2022. I absolutely love them, whether they were rereads or new to me reads. And the newer ones, I probably will reread sometime in the future. Um, maybe not the comic book. I mean, I might, because I might want to see their relationship again. But I'm not the biggest comic book fan. The only reason why I was even reading them in the first place was because I, I love the show so much and I wanted to see what happened. Especially since I knew we got, got more into their relationship. I wanted to see it. <sighs> I'm a little breathless now. I still have more videos I need to make. I might take a little break before I do, though. Um, but yeah, 
So, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment your favorite reads of 2022. I would love to hear them and chat with you below in the comments. Until next time.